Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining the webinar. Uh, today, we'll be talking about designing work holding with composite 3D printing. My name is Alexander Kreese. I'm a content engineer here at MarkForge, and I'm joined by Marco Medecki, our marketing coordinator, who will be helping with questions at the end. So our agenda for today, first I'll talk a bit about MarkForge and our company history. Then I'll go into some of the challenges associated with work holding for, uh, for machining. And then I'll go on to talk about what about MarkForge and our unique fiber reinforcement process it makes our products a good fit for work holding. Then we'll go through basically the design of a particular uh, fixture for a machining operation and why we made some of the decisions around the printing and the reinforcement. And then we'll open it up to questions at the end of the presentation. So a little bit about MarkForge. We were founded out of MIT in 2013, headquartered in Boston, Massachusetts. We shipped the Mark I, our first product, in 2014, and have expanded and developed our product line, achieving profitability in Q1 of 2017 and 300% year-over-year growth last year. We have backgrounds from a whole range of different companies and institutions, including MIT, Olin College, Tulio, Cisco Meraki, Bell Laboratories, Sonos, and Enernoc. So as a 3D printing company, we cover the full range of materials from plastics to continuous composite materials to metals. Today, we've shipped thousands of machines to customers worldwide, ranging from small machine shops to international businesses. Our customers use our products to produce high strength, high quality parts in a wide variety of applications, from tooling and fixturing in manufacturing to functional prototypes to end use parts. We have a wide network of resellers that provide support, maintenance, and training worldwide. Our products are trusted by industry leaders spanning many verticals, including aerospace, healthcare, automotive, manufacturing, and education. So our mission is to empower engineers to unlock the next 10x innovations in design and manufacturing. And when we're talking about manufacturing, we're not just talking about the end-use final products that companies produce. We're talking about all the steps that it takes to get there. So starting from your first prototype to your final product produced in thousands of quantities, there are all of these challenges along the way, including work holding, tooling and fixturing, inspection, scale up, and we want to help solve a lot of those challenges in manufacturing. So that's why we're talking about work holding today. We're going to go into a brief description of work holding and some of its associated challenges. So in any manufacturing operation, you always need a way to hold your part while it's being manufactured. Normally, standard vices or clamps are used, but as your parts get more complex, it becomes much more difficult to hold your part this way. So this is usually where custom work holding comes in. Traditionally, custom work holding is also machined, but one of the big challenges about this is that this consumes additional machine bandwidth. So if you're trying to machine a part, you have to do preemptive machining steps just to machine the fixture to hold that part first. This can end up becoming very costly and very time consuming as your part complexity increases. So some of the properties associated with torque holding include uh, precision. Your part needs to be very precise so that when it's located on the bed of your mill and you're performing your machining operations, you're performing them in the right spot. The part needs to be tough and stiff because you don't want the fixture to deflect or deform during machining because this will also ruin the job. And you want your part to be chemically resistant and wear resistant. Chemical resistance because in machining you use a lot of coolants and fluids to make sure that the machining operation goes through smoothly. And you also want wear resistance because you don't just want a fixture that will last one operation or get you through five runs of the same part. You want something long lasting, something very sturdy and robust. So parts need to be very wear resistant. So as they age, they should work just as well on every single part, no matter how many times you're manufacturing it. So now we're gonna get into why MarkForge products in particular are very useful for creating this type of work holding. So many 3D printers are incapable of creating work holding for machining because they fail to meet the material requirements. Plastics like PLA and ABS are brittle and will degrade quickly when exposed to machining forces and coolant. So our materials are very corrosion resistant and very wear resistant because we have a nylon base. So our Onyx chopped carbon fiber nylon blend is one of our unique materials that is very chemically resistant and very wear resistant because of the combination of the nylon and the chopped carbon fiber. So our continuous fiber reinforcement process 
enables much higher strength, toughness, and durability with the continuous fibers and makes them much stronger than these sort of traditional 3D printing plastics. In addition to our material strength, we design our machines for industrial purposes. So our machines have a well-built aluminum construction and we have features like the laser micrometer pictured here on our industrial series machine that enables high control and precision in combination with our full sensor suite on our machines. So we can usually achieve precision in the range of 50 to 100 microns. So now back to the strength. It's the continuous fiber in our parts that allow MarkForge printers to achieve such high strength. Many other printers can print in chopped composite fibers similar to our onyx material, but the continuous strands are really what make the strength difference. Basically, when your part is loaded, the forces and the pressures distribute along the strands whose high tensile strength basically absorbs the load and makes the part very, very stiff, very tough, and very strong. And our software gives you the ability to basically control where this fiber goes in your part. You have granular control layer by layer of your fiber reinforcement in your part. And you can select between different fill options like isotropic fill on the left here, which basically lays down a sheet of fiber within your part, or internal hole concentric fill, which encircles the internal cavities of your part. We have a few other options, and basically this allows you to optimize your part strength for its application. So before we dig into the design, I'll explain some of the sort of theory behind composites, why we have these options. So basically, a composite sandwich theory describes beam bending behavior under a load. So as a beam like this is being flexed, the top and bottom panels experience the most stress, whereas the core undergoes very minimal stress. So by only reinforcing the top and bottom panels, you can efficiently reinforce a beam, minimizing its weight and its cost. So this is why you'll see I-beams used in construction. It's because they are maximizing the strength to weight of the beam by removing much of the center section and leaving the rigid panels on the top and bottom. Uh, so this theory sort of will guide us through the fiber reinforcement process and why we make some of the decisions about our reinforcement. Um, so now let's get into the design. This is the part that we're machining. It's the rear motor mount on a Yamaha XS650 motorcycle. So this part has a few interesting features, some pockets, some tapped holes, an extrusion on the underside of the part, uh, which basically means that we have to have two setups when machining this part, one for the top and one for the bottom. So going right into setup one, we're going to index off the part. You can see that basically this is a very traditional machining setup. We have a vise clamped to the bed of our mill, and we have the aluminum block that's been cut to size clamped in the vise. First, we're going to face the part to clean up that top surface. Then we're going to machine the outside profile as sort of a rough pass and then a finish pass. Then we're going to machine out some of the pockets and drill the holes, tap the holes, and eventually we'll end up with a completed first setup. And so now you'll see why we need sort of a unique piece of work holding for this. It's because we have the top half of the, the part is done and we'll need to flip it over and machine off that back face and perform some operations on that. So in terms of the work holding design, we have a few requirements and here's the design for the fixture plate and I'll go through those requirements and how we've incorporated them into the fixture plate. So first we need to locate the part on the fixture plate. This is important because if the part is not located precisely, then the top face won't match the bottom face. So we need to make sure that everything is lined up well and that the machine knows where it is with respect to the part, which requires a very precise fixture. How we're going to locate the part is with this sort of recession that you see in the center of the fixture that uh, locates the part with respect to the fixture. As I said before, we can achieve roughly 50 micron precision. So this locates the part and it's a very snug fit. We then secure our part down, make sure it's clamped in our fixture with some bolts coming through the bottom of the fixture. And then we need to locate the fixture on the bed. And what we're going to do here is we're actually going to press in some drill bushings into the fixture and then slide dowel pins through the drill bushings into the bed of the mill, which basically will precisely locate the fixture on the bed. Then we can secure the part and the fixture down to the bed with some more bolts. So next on to the loading conditions. So uh, basically we need to figure out how this part is being loaded to see how we can optimize it efficiently. So first is the compression that is applied by the bolts, basically squeezing that, uh, that fixture plate. Next 
as we're machining, the mill is basically pressing against the part during the machining process, and that load gets distributed along the walls of that cavity that I pointed out earlier. And so that cavity will end up needing to be reinforced. And further, those forces basically distribute among all of the, uh, the bolts in the fixture. And so the bolts end up getting some amount of applied torsion out of axis and trying to essentially like shear the fixture plate. And so these loading conditions are also really important and will also affect how we choose to reinforce the part. So now we're gonna put the part in the MarkForge software. We're going to reinforce with fiberglass uh, because it's a very robust, very sturdy material. So it's very well designed for applications like these, tooling and fixturing and stuff like that. So now we're going on to the internal view of the part. Right now, it's just our plastic material. So let's list out our part loading conditions and one by one go through and reinforce the part based on those conditions. So the first is the bolt compression. So I put basically three panels of isotropic fiberglass reinforcement to resist the compression of the bolts. If you think of this like a sandwich panel, we have a panel on the top and a panel on the bottom that is resisting the overall compressive force from the bolts that bolt the fixture to the bed. And then we have this secondary panel here, and that is because of the, the bolts coming up and bolting to the part itself. So that panel is spaced right below where the counter bore for those bolt heads lies. So when those bolt heads are screwing in, they're pressing up against that panel and basically forming another sandwich panel between that intermediary panel and the top panel. So our next loading condition is the cavity wall loads from machining. Uh, so what we can do is we can have internal hole reinforcement on those cavity walls to basically prevent them from flexing as the milling machine is doing its passes over the part. So that's a pretty simple way to implement that. So that last loading condition that's caused by the distribution of the forces from the milling operation onto all of the bolts, we're also going to apply concentric rings to reinforce the cavities of all of the bolt holes. So if those bolts end up twisting out of axis, then those rings will end up uh, sort of reinforcing to prevent that. So now let's look at the part statistics. So the print time is about 17 hours. When you compare this to the time it would take to get a similar fixture plate or soft jaw for this part traditionally, this is very reasonable. That's because this is 17 hours of your print just running by itself unattended. Whereas if you had to machine these soft jaws yourself, you would have to get the stock, you'd have to write your program to run your CNC machine and machine out those soft jaws. And that ends up taking a lot of your time or your machinist time. Whereas here you're just hitting a button, press and go, and your fixture's ready the next day. Likewise with the cost, uh, machining often ends up being costly because as your number of operations increases, uh, the cost increases. Whereas for 3D printing, complexity is essentially free. You hit print, there's no material waste, your print completes. For a part with the strength requirements of a fixture or of work holding like this, this ends up being very affordable and we've had customers that see very high return on investment because all of their work holding, all their fixturing for anything from machining to quality assurance and inspection, all that time and all of that money ends up being drastically reduced by just hitting print and having your fixture ready to go the next day. Uh, so now we're going to set up two. We're taking this part, we're flipping it over and placing it in our fixture. You can see the dowel pins there that I mentioned earlier to align the fixture with the, the bed of the mill. One of the interesting things about this part is that it's tricky to index off of. So usually when you're setting up you know, a second setup on your machine, you need a flat machined surface to index off of so that you can use that as your reference when machining the rest of the part so that the top surface matches the bottom. This part has curved surfaces, has this rough cut shape on the top, and doesn't really have anywhere good to locate off of. We actually have to locate and index off of the fixture plate itself. We can do that because the printers end up being very precise. So this is one of the added benefits of the precision of the printers is that you can index off of our parts to set your zero on your milling machine. So now that we have our part indexed, we can go ahead and machine. We're going to face off the material on the top machine down some of the sections of that top face and then chamfer all the edges. And so now setup two is complete and if you look at that chamfer that's running around the edge of the part, if the indexing was not precise, 
then there would be a noticeable offset in where that chamfer exists. So we were able to set up and locate our part effectively with this fixture plate. So now we can mount it on the motorcycle and we're good to go. So just as a summary with composite 3D printers, you can really reduce a lot of the hassle and the challenges in work holding by printing your fixtures, printing your soft jaws, and work holding for machining. These end up being very cost-effective parts that are made to handle the machining requirements. Because of our chemical resistance, because of our toughness, our strength, you can create parts that will last a really long time on a manufacturing floor. So using MarkForge products really allows you to streamline your manufacturing workflow because you can crank out tooling, these fixturing and work holding parts really, really cost effectively and really quickly. Thank you all for attending and I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Now we're gonna open it up to some questions. If we don't get to your question or if you have any other insights or application ideas or anything like that, please feel free to reach out to us on our website where a sales representative will be in touch.